Well, it seems like the traditional Latin mass may be on the chopping block, at least almost completely, if not completely, as there are rumors circulating that beginning as early as April 3rd, there's going to be some sort of declaration or whatnot out of Rome that is basically going to mean that the Latin mass is effectively going to go bye-bye. For some reason, in the, in the wake of all this, there are a host of supposed Catholic apologists who have seemingly anointed themselves with the sacred duty to go after the SSPX with every waking minute of the day. It's very strange with all the things that we could be talking about in the church. You know, goodness gracious, even if the Society of St. Pius X were a problem, I think they're probably, you know, on a list of a thousand problems, they're number 1,000, you know, considering how bad things are. At any rate, Accusations of schism, not being in communion, excommunication, and so on and so forth are banding about, and in reality, none of these are really new arguments, but just sort of old arguments put in new ways. So I thought I'd give a little selection of my forthcoming book, The SSPX, A Defense, which will be out soon, and I would uh, share something from that book uh, to defend the SSPX against accusations of schism and excommunications. Enjoy. Are they in schism? No. This is an easy and clear-cut answer. This was confirmed by Edward Cardinal Cassidy, President Emeritus of the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, who declared in an official letter from May 3, 1994, he said, quote, I would point out at once that the Director on Ecumenism is not concerned with the Society of St. Pius X, situation of the members of this society is an internal matter of the Catholic Church. The society is not another church or ecclesial community in the meaning used in the directory. Those who respond otherwise are grossly misinformed. Even if the excommunications of the four bishops in 1988 were taken at face value, they have now been authoritatively made null and void. The excommunication of the four bishops consecrated by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre on June 30, 1988 which had been declared by the Congregation for Bishops in a decree dated July 1, 1988, and which the Society of St. Pius X has always contested, was withdrawn by a decree mandated by Pope Benedict XVI and issued by the same congregation on January 1, 2009. Quote, On the basis of the powers expressly granted to me by the Holy Father Benedict XVI, by virtue of the present decree, I remit the penalty of excommunication lete sententiae incurred by Bishops Bernard Fillet, Bernard Tissier de Malloray, Richard Williamson, and Alfonso de Galaretta, and declared by this congregation on July 1, 1988. At the same time, I declare that, as of today's date, the decree issued at that time no longer has juridical effect. Moreover, those excommunications never apply to the hundreds of priests in the society or to the faithful who receive the sacraments or pastoral care from them. Some may contest this and say that the priests of the SSPX put themselves into schism by attaching themselves formally to the alleged schism created by Marcel Lefebvre, but that there was ever a formal schism was denied by Cardinal Hoyos, whose job it was to oversee the canonical situation of the SSPX, which we will now consider. Being in schism is a formal term. In essence, it means one rejects the truth that the Pope has universal authority over the Church or that a bishop has authority over his diocese. Practically, this means a schismatic group sets up or adheres to its own authorities, denying the ecclesial jurisdiction and even canonical law of the Catholic Church. Liturgically, it means they will not pray for the Pope or the local bishop in the Mass. The SSPX is not guilty of these schismatic acts. It has been said by detractors of the SSPX that just because SSPX priests demonstrate their subjection to Pope Francis and local bishops by praying for them in the canon is not sufficient because there are other schismatic groups like the so-called Old Catholics that do the same. But this comparison is intellectually dishonest, as some of the Old Catholic groups have gone off the deep end, and many have since become actual heretics, evidenced by the fact that they now quote-unquote ordain women to the priesthood, which is heretical and impossible. Only the most ill-inspired anti-SSPX calumniators could compare the SSPX with groups like the Old Catholics, and only an uninformed public could accept such baseless comparisons. Now, even excommunication is not sufficient for one to be in schism. 
For example, one could be personally excommunicated for some crime, yet one is not thereby placed under the authority of some other church or religious group. Only the proper authority can make such a claim, and Cardinal Castellan Hoyos, while president of the Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Dei, the papal mandated Vatican congregation that dealt with the SSPX until the commission was dissolved, made it clear that they are not in schism. He did this more than once. In 2005, regarding the 1988 consecrations done without a pontifical mandate, he stated that it created a quote-unquote situation of separation, even if it, the SSPX, was not in formal schism. What this quote-unquote separation is, if not a schism, no one can tell you. Again in 2005, Hoyo stated, It cannot be said in correct, exact, and precise terms that there is a schism. They are within the church. Again in 2007, Cardinal Hoyo stated, that the priests of the SSPX and adherents are not schismatics. Being in schism is a binary term. You either are in schism or you are not. There is no in-between. Our Lord tells us, but let your speech be yea, yea, no, no, and that which is over and above these is of evil. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37. Furthermore, Cardinal Hoyos affirmed that to say the SSPX is in schism is incorrect. Any other answer is a foggy attempt to present what is in reality an imperfect and difficult situation as something other than it is. In addition, Hoyos wrote a letter to Bishop Fillet saying, Your fraternity certainly was not disseminating any heresy nor nurturing schismatic attitudes. Hoyos added, I was therefore committed to look for a formula that would give to your fraternity the full guarantee of maintaining its own charism of service to tradition, to secure the right of Mass of St. Pius V, and to pursue fully the effort to safeguard sound doctrine and preserve Catholic morality and discipline. From the beginning, starting with this fundamental and positive disposition, there was nourished the hope of laying to rest the irregular situation in which your fraternity finds itself. Also because there was not disclosed any inkling of heresy nor any will to incur a formal schism, but only the desire to contribute to the good of the universal church, retaining the specific charism of the Society of St. Pius X with regard to tradition in the current context. No inkling of heresy or schism, some schismatics. Furthermore, even Pope Benedict XVI, may God rest his soul, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger admonished a bishop in Hawaii in 1991 for wrongly excommunicating families from his diocese who had their children confirmed by a bishop of the SSPX. This was done under the pretense that those involved had adhered formally to a schism. In 1993, the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith ruled that the individuals in question, adherents and supporters of the Society of St. Pius X, did not perform schismatic acts in the strict sense as they do not constitute the offense of schism, and therefore the Congregation holds that the decree of May 1, 1991, the decree of excommunication, lacks foundation and hence validity. Benedict made it clear there was no schism. Of course, the detractors of the society will say that just because Ratzinger clarified that adherents and supporters of the SSPX aren't schismatics doesn't mean that the society isn't itself schismatic. But hold on, John Paul II was adamant that there was a schism in 1988, and he even warned, all those who until now have been linked in various ways to the movement of Archbishop Lefebvre that they should be aware that formal adherence to the schism is a grave offense against God and carries the penalty of excommunication decreed by the church's law. This leaves us with a bit of a conundrum. It seems that the faithful in Hawaii did their utmost to be linked to the movement of Archbishop Lefebvre. Yet a diocesan bishop had his decision overruled even though he followed the Pope's declaration to the letter. It does not take a canon lawyer to recognize that terms like linked in various ways are legally vague and utterly meaningless. What does it mean to be linked in various ways? Is a janitor employed by the SSPX school down the road linked in various ways to the movement of Archbishop Lefebvre? We could go on with absurd examples that show how absurd the declaration was. The point is, when put to the test, there seemed to be a vanishing schism, and this was the decision of Cardinal Ratzinger, who was entrusted by the Pope who declared the schism. If it is found that you cannot be excommunicated for supposedly adhering to a formal schism, even though you went against the strict letter of a supposedly binding declaration by a pope, then one must ask, where is the schism? Now, I know what you're thinking. They may not be in schism, but aren't they schismatic? 
When someone makes this assertion, they seem to be playing with words. A serious problem with our manner of speaking today is imprecision and using terms without properly defining them. Incidentally, this is a hallmark of modernism and a modus operandi of today's ecclesial dialogue. How is the word schismatic being used in such an assertion? Schism and schismatic should mean the same thing. We simply have a noun and an adjective form of the same word. For example, to say a breakaway church like the Russian Orthodox Church is schismatic is the correct usage. In addition, Father John Zolstorff, commonly known as Father Z, wrote about the way that the term schismatic is used imprecisely by opponents of the SSPX in a blog post from April 2020. Father Z was an employee of the Pontifical Commission Ecclesia Day, and an article posted at EWTN, not an outlet that is friendly to the SSPX, called him a noted authority on matters pertaining to Catholic tradition. He wrote, Also, it is claimed that the SSPX has been in schism since 1988 because the illicit consecration of bishops by Archbishop Lefebvre was a quote-unquote schismatic act. However, it takes more than an act to create a real schism. It was obviously, manifestly not Archbishop Lefebvre's intention to set up a separate or rival church, or to make himself or someone else an anti-pope, or to create other aspects of a true schism. The SSPX priests quite openly have used the names of the popes in the Roman canon during Mass. They have recourse to diocesan tribunals in marriage and other matters. They follow the decrees of the Sacra Penitentia Apostolica in the matter of indulgences. They accept faculties for marriage, etc., from local bishops. Recently, they communicated to their followers the dispensations and provisions given by local bishops in this time of coronavirus lockdown. These are not the acts of schismatics. The SSBX has common and shared faith, sacraments, and governance. Protestants have some shared faith, a couple sacraments, and no governance. Orthodox have shared faith and sacraments, but not shared governance. The SSPX has all three. As is clear by the fact that Francis acted in their regard about the sacraments of penance and matrimony in a way that would be impossible with, say, heretics or schismatics. They are not separated brethren, no question. To infer that a group of Catholics are schismatic because they have an attitude that reflects schism is in fact casting a judgment upon the interior life of every single person in that group. As disciples of Christ, we are called to judge objective external acts, but are to refrain from judging the internal spiritual disposition of a soul. In this case, the objective eternal act in question is schism, and the proper church authority has judged that the SSPX is not in schism. None of us should then presume to judge the internal attitude of this or that person in that group let alone of the entire group at large. Rather, we should deal with fellow Catholics as St. Thomas Aquinas so eloquently says, unless we have evident indications of a person's wickedness, we ought to deem him good by interpreting for the best whatever is doubtful about him. Now, if that's not enough, I know what you're thinking. Couldn't we say they are materially schismatic? If you hear these terms, it is most likely a parallel reference to the precise distinction between formal heresy and material heresy. Formal heresy is when one truly expresses an opinion, which is a denial of an article of divine and Catholic faith, for example, the Trinity, and does so knowingly, fully aware of it, being against the doctrine of the Church, and obstinately, which means deliberately. Material heresy is when one maintains an opinion that objectively contradicts the infallible teachings of the Church, and as such, is heretical. But the person honestly does not know he is holding something against the Catholic faith. Father Hardin's Modern Catholic Dictionary defines heresy as follows. In the Roman Catholic Church, heresy has a very specific meaning, defined by canon law, which states that anyone who, after receiving baptism, while remaining nominally a Christian, pertinaciously denies or doubts any of the truths which must be believed with divine and Catholic faith is a heretic. Accordingly, four elements must be verified to constitute formal heresy, previous valid baptism, which need not have been in the Catholic Church, external profession of still being a Christian, otherwise a person becomes an apostate, outright denial or positive doubt regarding a truth which the Catholic Church has actually proposed as revealed by God, and the disbelief must be morally culpable, where a nominal Christian refuses to accept what he knows is a doctrinal imperative. Heresy can be a tricky matter, 
because one can be a heretic either intentionally or unintentionally. Those who are declared formal heretics were usually intentional exterior heretics even before the declaration. In contrast, material heresy is an unintentionally erroneous interior disposition. Quite frankly, we can all be guilty of material heresy, insofar as we may have misunderstandings regarding the inscrutable nature of the triune God and His divine mysteries. It can also be difficult to know if a person knowingly and obstinately rejects an article of divine faith. Any question on such a matter would be removed if the proper church authority, such as a pope or a bishop in his diocese, judged the matter and issued an explicit statement regarding so-and-so being a heretic until he renounced said heretical position. Since schism is usually associated with heresy, traditional Catholic theology teaches that when this is the case, what was said of heresy applies equally to schism. Thus, formal schism is when one makes a positive act of the will to deny the God-given and rightful authority of the church, pope, or bishops. Whereas material schism is when one does not realize that such denial is the result of their actions. So, the only way to know if someone is in material schism is to ask them what their intention is. I know this might be a novel concept in today's social media-driven world, but the simplest thing would be to just ask a priest of the SSPX if they have set up an alternative hierarchy, not in union with the Pope, Cardinals, and Bishops. Why accept someone else's accusation, which might be calumny, when one could easily go to the primary source? Do they reject the authority of the Pope or deny the Bishop's authority in his diocese? I have yet to meet an SSPX priest who holds such a view. This is certainly not the official position of the organization. This is abundantly clear from all their writings. Moreover, and an even more powerful witness, is the fact that at Holy Mass they pray for the Pope and the local bishop. Those who are intentionally schismatic do not pray thus in the sacred liturgy. Interestingly, schism is technically a sin against charity and a sin against unity with fellow Catholics. Thus, when one foments unnecessary division by exercising lack of charity, one is guilty of a species of sin which lies in the same category as schism. Thus, if one wrongly labels SSPX priests as excommunicated and schismatic, or calumniates or detracts them, then one can actually be guilty of such a sin, which is ironically similar to schism. Now, some people may do this without sufficient knowledge or deliberate consent, so only God can judge if they have sinned. However, we all do well to keep in mind that this is why Holy Mother Church always advises us to give others the benefit of the doubt and not speak ill of another without real need or moral certitude. After all, we should never detract or calumniate any person or group. But I heard Cardinal so-and-so or Father so-and-so say the SSPX is schismatic. Once again, schism is a grave sin, and so it should be treated with the proper seriousness. If anyone is going to publicly state that a group is guilty of schism, they should only do so after the proper church authority has already made this declaration. Naturally, such judgments should be made in accordance with proper procedures and accordance with justice and charity so as to effectually bind the faithful. While a bishop does have the authority to declare that someone in his diocese is in schism or excommunicated, he does not have the authority to contradict such a ruling if it has already been made by the Pope. Obviously, if the Pope justly declared Martin Luther a heretic, no bishop could then declare him a Catholic in good standing within his particular diocese. About the SSPX, the relevant Vatican congregations have already judged that the SSPX is not in schism. You will search in vain to find any statement in which John Paul II, Benedict XVI, or Francis, or the prelates heading the appropriate congregations, have said the SSPX as such is in schism. Critics love to prattle on about the last three popes quote-unquote declaring that the SSPX is in an objective state of schism, but this is untrue. Surely Pope John Paul II accused Lefebvre of having committed a schismatic act. But the SSPX as such has never been declared to be in schism. Pope Benedict never did anything of the sort, even if he wrote in a letter that the SSPX does not have a legitimate ministry in the church. But not having a legitimate ministry hardly creates a schism. And Pope Francis has explicitly recognized the faculties of SSPX priests. If the current pontiff has declared the SSPX in schism, then he must have forgotten as it would be impossible to give true schismatics faculties. And if he did somehow forget about the supposedly declared schism, then we would have to doubt his capacity to make sound decisions 
and his declarations would be suspect to say the least. If a prelate or priest says the SSPX is in schism, then they may very well be speaking from incorrect information. This opinion was quite widespread in the 1990s and early 2000s, and much of that literature still predominates in many circles. A young seminarian may have heard this accusation years ago, never done any research, and 20 years later as a bishop still holds this erroneous view. In this time of crisis in the church, there are a variety of divergent opinions about basically everything. The fact that you can peruse documents from Vatican sources that tell you multiple opinions on the same topic is further evidence that not only the faithful are confused, but when they look to the hierarchy for clarity, they don't find it. We will discuss the concept of a state of necessity in another video. But if a state of necessity could be argued, then the fact that within the ranks of the hierarchy, there is confusion about so essential an issue as schism and the SSPX, it is yet another reason to extend charity to the SSPX and its supporters who seek to live out their faith and to judge the facts charitably as well. The situation of the SSPX remains a matter of ecclesial governance, and therefore it may be that any individual, even a holy priest, may have his own opinion. That opinion is not binding upon another. Is it appropriate for any priest to tell a parishioner that the SSPX is in schism when the church says otherwise? Thanks for watching the video, and before you go, I just wanted to talk about one more thing. You've probably heard the expression, buy locally. However, some things you just can't get locally. So if you're going to buy something you can't get locally, you want to try to buy from somebody who shares your values. Well, if you enjoy what we do at this channel, thank you very much, and we share the same values. Well, here at the Kennedy Report, we've actually embarked on a very interesting endeavor. We've procured frankincense oil from the Middle East. Maybe you've bought essential oils before. Uh, I know I have. My wife likes them for making remedies and making the house smell nice. Well, the problem is with those companies is that usually they're owned by people who are part of really strange New Age movements or false religions. So by supporting them, you're supporting something that you're not in line with. Well, if you click the link in the description, you can see where we have our sacred frankincense oil. And we also have a lanolin balm for sale. There are numerous reported health benefits for frankincense oil. We're not making a claim one way or the other here at the Kennedy Report. That's not our place. But if you're into these things, you know what I'm talking about. And it should be noted, we actually procured some of the best oil in the world. And we only have 70 of them in stock. And they're going to go quick. And we're not sure if we're going to get them again. So if you like the channel and you can't buy these things locally because you don't happen to live near a frankincense manufacturing location in the Middle East, then at least you can buy them from somebody who has the same value of you, values as you. Click the links in the description to find out more and thank you.